So it's a great pleasure to come here and share some of my work from my group talking about electricity grid. So what I'm going to share with you is how the IoT going to help the electricity grid become a greener one, more efficient, and a more sustainable one. So let me start with a brief overview how today's grid is operating and why we want to change it. In the today's grid, we have a power plant generate power, and the power is transmitted and distributed to end users. So the fundamental goal is to make sure supply equal demand all the time. Now we look at supply and demand. For the demand set, we call it unresponsive. What this means? It means as a user, we can decide how much to consume, what to consume, when to consume. So individuals have a lot of flexibility or uncertainty, but fortunately, the aggregated demand profile is predictable. I'm going to put this closer. Is my voice better? I still no. Better? Okay. I will try to speak loud. Okay. Speak loud. Okay. So the aggregated demand profile is predictable. Let's put one example. So this is one neighborhood, one area. We look at a different day, it actually follows a similar pattern. So we take Harvard campus as an example. Individual user, individual professor, student, staff has very different usage. But if we take the campus as system together, it's predictable. That's how the facility is running the energy usage of each building. So all the control part, now we want to make sure supply equal demand. All the control part is pushed to the generation side. For the generation side, we have a market tool, ecologist tool, engineering, computer science. We have tools from all different kind of disciplines. Try to make sure we can decide how much generation to generate to satisfy the demand. So this looks fun to satisfy our daily demand. We have the light on all the time, but the problem so what are the standard example of the controllable power plant? <coughs> this is one. It's caused a big problem for the energy and environmental sustainability. So because of the gas emission, all the different requirements. So one way is try to use renewable energy. So this map shows how different states want to deploy renewable energy by a certain time. It had different target. We can see for some states, it's very aggressive. California want to have 33% renewable energy usage by the end of 2020. That's only four years to go. So what's the problem? So now we're talking about the new different generation. For this renewable generation, it's very different from the traditional power plant. First, how much is generated? It's not controlled by human. It has a lot of uncertainty. It's random. So this is one example about the wind. For the wind generation, here we paused the generation a different day. We almost didn't see any pattern. And for the solar, if a cloud comes, the solar generation can drop immediately within a few seconds. That's cause a bigger problem if we still want to maintain every user has energy to use at every point. Besides that, another thing, because we want to have vast energy as much as possible, the way we're going to do it is Try to build more renewable energy plant. Like we can have a small wind turbine, a small solar PV on our roof. So what does this tell us? For the grid, so here this picture shows the progress in the Denmark. Denmark now has like 100% <coughs> energy from wind energy. So we look at the Denmark. Previously, it's only in a few number big traditional controllable power plant. Now we have a much larger number. Even the size becomes smaller, but the the number become much big. So this caused a big problem. How are we going to control such big number of renewable energy power plant? Put them together, what happens? So why the changes in the electricity grid? For the generation side, become less controllable, lots of uncertainty, more distributed, and very large scale. So now we think about how we can make sure we can reduce the gas emission by use all the renewable energy. <coughs> So one way, like we have another flexibility we haven't been used before. We can change the unresponsive demand to responsive demand. What are typical examples? People building smart appliances, we're talking about LED right now. Storage, electrical vehicle. So together with the small solar PV or the wind turbine, people usually call now in the future, we are going to have a different distributed energy resources in the system. That can help our grid. As a result, what are we seeing in today's life? We have been seeing more and more house has the solar on the roof or has a wind turbine. 
more and more people try to use the smart appliance that has a Wi-Fi, has a communication skills, and more and more people willing to drive the electrical vehicle, and this smarter charging scheme has been building by technologies. So all this looks very promising, um, but let's put everything together. So we put everything together, what do we have? Now we're going to have a huge power network has many, many active points. Previously, as a user, we are passive, so the aggregate demand profile is predictable. Now, every point in the system can become active. I can intentionally change my usage. I can, like, as a whole system together, probably I will change it the wrong way. So, the challenge is now each point probably going to introduce a large fluctuation to the system. And we are dealing with the physical power grid. The power grid has the physical variables we want to maintain is in the safe range. So the problem is how we're going to coordinate the device in the right way. That's how the IoT can help. So the electricity grid starting, try to deploy more sensing, communication, and computation. We call it the <coughs> cyber infrastructure in the system. So now we have a smart meter that can measure all different kinds of signal in the grid. And we have a smart appliance has a Wi-Fi or other communication skills in the device. And people also starting building different microcontrollers, try to control the device to respond much faster. So that's what's happening now. And we can see all the different products in the supermarket very daily. So, but what's the challenges? So everything looks very promising. The engineering difficulty is this. Let's look at the electricity grid with a new cyber infrastructure. First, we are dealing with the joint power grid. This power grid has intrinsic physics we need to follow. It's not freely to change. And we have a lot of hard constraints to make sure. For example, transmission line has capacity. Transformer has capacity. Any wrong decision probably going to lead to outage of the neighborhood or even a cascading failure of the entire US. So that's caused a big problem. Like, I heard people laughing, but remember 2003, we have a big cascading failure in the northeast part. So probably it's going to happen if we are not being carefully try to deploy in the new technologies. So this is the physical side. About the cyber side. So we have been talking about IoT is very advanced. We have advanced communication skills. But let's take a deeper look. Look at the communication skill. The package occasionally will still get dropped or delayed. And that's cause a problem if I want to maintain supply equal demand at every second. And people, we're talking about the privacy issue. People are probably not very interested in my energy usage at my house. And that is cause a lot of problem in terms of security. And like we have so many, now we talk about all the device, like we talk about LED. If each light bulb going to communicate or going to generate data, that's cause a big problem. How are we going to coordinate such huge system? And Additionally, we also talk about people have different needs. We are dealing with heterogeneous usage. How are we going to make sure people are happy? People are happy to apply, to take those new advantage, new technologies to do the changes. So put all of them together. Let's put a question. As an engineer, mathematician, is how are we going to control those devices given all the technology potentials? So I'm going to put this picture. So now like we say, is this really like just a nice picture? It's never going to achieve, or we actually have some potential. So like people talking about power grid has been, now is a wash bad moment for the power grid. It should go through some similar changes like the phone network. So the phone network and the power network has a lot of similarities. Both of them started around similar time at the beginning, they were just single commodity. But now when we look at the phone network, communication network, we have a different product. Laptop, cell phone, and like the new IoT. So if Bell come to our life now, it will be hard for him to recognize the new phone network. But for the Tesla, when we come to look at the electricity grid, it almost looks similarly. So people talking about, we should have some similar change. Like we can also make people have different product. People can change, take action differently. But how are we going to do that? So we know like one agreement is originally the centralized vertical planning scheme going to become more distributed or some other layering architecture. But what distributed we talk about? Why we care about distributed structure? I'm going to give a few examples why distributed is the way we go. 
so this is a distribution network. We have a power line connecting different device, uh, different house, different generations. So each node, each bus, people call it either be aggregator, a building, electrical vehicle, charging station, or some renewable generation. And we have a power flow between those device, different point. So what's the distributed structure? So ideally, so let's talk about, I talk about communication has challenges. The first ideally way is if we can do fully decentralized, what the fully decentralized means, I just rely on the new like smart meter, the new sensing schemes, do the measurement of the power grid, see what's happening, and take the action, change my device power consumption, and then let's is mitigate the fluctuation in the system. So this is a fully distributed, decentralized structure, and it relies on the physics of the power grid. By measuring the physical signals, such as frequency, voltage, and down need communication. Looks very nice. And we actually did some work. So like, there is one work we call it like load frequency control. How are we going to control the load based on the physical variables? So as I said, like, the whole grid is connected. If some fluctuation happens, we will see some fluctuation of the physical signals. For example, this is one signal about frequency. And the fluctuation can be propagated through the grid. Since we see the fluctuation from the measurement, if I have a smart device can measure the signal, then I can put it into my control scheme in my house. And that's going to coordinate the power usage of the different device, such as, for example, HVAC probably has some flexibility for me to change. Putting them together, we have a hope to mitigate the fluctuation in the system. So this is very nice. We have some theoretical work, and we're also doing some demonstration how it's going to help the system, help the grid. But we can imagine it's not going to solve the whole problem. Like It looks too good to be true, like fully decentralized. So in a lot of scenario, we also need some communication. So now we talk about communication, different IoT architecture. So this is the one IoT structure. If we have some coordinator, sitting in the middle, try to coordinate different needs of different users. So it seems that the control center try to communicate with each user. So for this one, we, have, we assume we have a two-way communication between some control center and each users. But big problem for this structure is first, is this true we have a reliable communication between the control center and each device? And how are we going to coordinate? There is a privacy <coughs> issue. So this is another example from my group. So we developed distributed algorithm. So like the utility company, I would just like utility company taking care of the physical operation constraint of the power grid. And if an individual person care about their own needs. So now let's coordinate. When we coordinate is, so why I'm doing that? Like utility company don't have privacy information because of the privacy guarantee. So like, Utility company gather the power request from everyone. And then utility company based on the system grade operation constraints say, okay, I cannot satisfy everyone's need. Some person should change. So update the price. And once individual receives the price and change the power request, this is the ratio process. <coughs> Eventually, everyone will going to reach a consensus point. It's like balance everyone needs, also balance the system operation constraint. So this is one scheme if we allow people coordinate to one central coordinator. And let's put it more is like, a lot of people are very excited about the change for the electricity grid is the idea, I can sell power to my neighbors. But when we, I'm selling my power to my neighbors, I don't want to talk to the utility company or ISO some operator. I want some flexibility. So this is the, another distributed scheme, just like let neighbor talk to neighbor. I will choose any kind of user I'm going to talk and reach some consensus point to do that. So for this one, is assume we have some communication between the nodes that are connected in the system grid. And like now people studying, put all of them together with a picture for the IoT in the power grid. In the future, all the device generation, consumption, can communicate with each other, try to maximize, like I put some social welfare function, assume this social welfare function, satisfy the grid operation constraint. And like this lot of unknown, like ongoing work is I put a different communication structure, different IoT structure. Which one should we use? How are we going to combine the different architecture? What's the ideal architecture for the future grid? Does it people like we have it through the theory, 
algorithm and lots of demonstration and real implementation try to find the pros and the cons of different IoT structure and different control schemes. So you can imagine this is such a huge project is required in the discipline research between engineer, computer science, economic, social science, because I want to understand people's behavior, like policy, enterprise. Put all of them together, I want to conclude my talk. And thank you so much. So um, like for the algorithm, like um, it actually has a different type of customers. So based on different types, so that's why we're talking about three different communication schemes. Based on different customers, you actually have a different kind of algorithms. So for example, one ongoing project we are doing with a utility company. So utility company taking care of the distribution, like overall distribution network. So like this has um, like thousands of people. And they're going to first have some investment for the investment cost actually from the government, they will let each user has a new generation of smart meter. And then the next step is try to coordinate all the device and all the like solar PVs. And this is one type of customers. And another like, for some algorithm we have been developing is for the smart home. Like even I have a smart home, I have all the like IoT in my house. But the question is, the different appliance, which one I care about, which one I don't care about. And plus there's some benefit from the utility company, utility company willing to pay me something if I try to coordinate. So that the different customer needs in here. Yeah. So uh, battery is very important. So like in terms of the IoT structure, the storage is not going to change too much. But in terms of the algorithm or the reliability, the storage is going to help a lot. Like now a lot of algorithm we assume is we don't have cheap storage at each point. And then we rely on those devices like such as the heat, like uh, heating, cooling to serve as certain kind of storage to make sure my system, my grid can operate. But still, like people talking about storage getting cheaper and cheaper, it's still not that cheap. Yeah. Um, the solar is highly reliant on the connectivity between all the nodes. Yeah. What happens when that connectivity disappears? Your IoT goes down. That is a robust algorithm design. So we design algorithm to make sure it's robust. Even when you have certain failure, like if you assume every communication link fails, I cannot do anything. But if you just uh, like a portion of communication link fails, so the algorithm can still like, con like coordinate all the device. Yeah, this is through the algorithm design part. So uh, back to the storage question, do you think storage increases or decreases price and stability volatility <coughs> because it enables speculation? Is that like you were asking whether it's increase or decrease? Yeah. Does the existence of storage, does storage enable speculators which don't always make markets Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's the market design question. So we also did a, so for the storage, if it's like, if it's a good, um, like if it's good user, good agent, then it can help. It's going to mitigate the volatility. But if for the market design people, like the storage, the storage owner going to play strategically, it has the like sad effect. But that's the question, how are we going to design the market to make sure the storage owner not going to behave in that way? But ideally, it should have the potential to make it better. Yeah. So let's thank, thank our speaker. Thank you.